Hey there, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Rebecca. I'm a homeschool mom of five young children and today is a very exciting day because the much anticipated comparison review between the good and the beautiful and language lessons for a living education from Master Books is here. This is your day. So I have in front of me both the good and the beautiful and language lessons for a living education and I have them in comparable levels. So today you're gonna to actually get to see inside these books, side by side, what makes them different for yourself. You don't even have to take my word for it. We're gonna be looking at it side by side. I have level three and level two that I'm gonna be showing you. We're gonna talk about what comes in the kit, the price difference, the whole deal, what style is used, and to help you identify which one is gonna be a better fit for your family. So if you have been considering these two language arts programs, then this video is for you. So grab yourself something hot to drink and let's get started. So as far as price point, level two retails for about $64. If you choose to get the handwriting, it's about 77, but it comes with all those resources. Language Lessons for Living Education retails for $31, but only comes with the one book. Let's take a look at the table of contents. So in The Good and the Beautiful, there is a whole lot of pages in the table of contents because there's a lot of lessons. It's not laid out with daily open and go where you can see what you're doing from day to day. You just work for a set amount of time until you're done the book. And that may take you a month or more likely six months or up to a year or longer. Language Lessons for Living Education, on the other hand, is set up like a one-year curriculum. It has 36 weekly lessons with five days in each lesson. So it's open and go and there's a schedule to follow. So looking at how we're actually gonna teach it, you're gonna read in your reader for about 20 minutes. You're gonna do your spelling words for five to 10 minutes and your flashcards for five to 10 minutes. You're gonna work on your sight word ladders and then you're gonna do the course book for 30 to 40 minutes every single day. So in total, you're looking at 70 to 80 minutes for a lesson. Language Lessons for a Living Education, on the other hand, says it takes about 20 to 30 minutes. We found that for the level two, it takes us more like 10 to 15, and that is a pretty good amount of time to get it done. So let's look at the beginning of the course book so you can get an idea. So this is the course companion. Mine's a little wrinkled and worse for the wear. So to begin, you're gonna do a reading assessment. You're gonna time them and see how long it takes them, and you come back and do that again. So this is a sample lesson. They're working on segmenting and um, they're matching paragraphs. There's picture studies included in everything the good and the beautiful does. And then they're gonna be working on their flashcards. So they would do these for five to 10 minutes, just going through their phonics flashcards. And then they're gonna be doing their reading. So they're supposed to read for over 20 minutes each day, which is, you know, these readers are nice. They're kind of this vintage look. Now this is our checklist, so now we're gonna do our sight word ladders, and then also their spelling words. So the handwriting is optional, it doesn't come with the actual kit, it would be something you would purchase on top of it. Language Lessons for a Living Education, there is independent reading is actually assigned by you. So you together would pick a book with your child that you are going to decide that they will read for the week based on where they're at. Every week starts with either a story or a psalm or a poem or something that they are going to read. They read those little highlighted sections. There's memorization built in, there's sight words built in, just like the good and the beautiful. So it carries a lot of the same elements, but just in a very soft, easy to use way. So those are their sight words they're gonna continue and come back to. Um, there's grammar built in every week and copy work. It's very, very Charlotte Mason. There is writing included every single week. And then day four, they're gonna work on a story where they primarily at this age, they're drawing a picture and then they're writing one sentence at the beginning of the book. Day five, they're doing spelling. So this is something you can incorporate or you can do something different. It's up to you. At the end, they write a sentence using their spelling words.
Now let's take a look at the end of the book because I always like to look at the beginning and the end to kind of see the difference of where the curriculum is going to take them. So here we're seeing we're getting into book studies. They're supposed to be reading a chapter. They're discussing, they're doing activities, they're doing worksheets, they are um, having to paraphrase or, or summarize the chapter that they've read, and then they're reading more. So there's a lot of reading, doing, worksheet, spelling, segmenting, all that different kind of stuff um, built in. So this is an example of where it teaches you, it's pretty heavy on this in the, in the level two and the three, the good messages and bad messages and paying attention. And this gives you specific examples of the Diary of a Wimpy Kid. So here, just continuing on, so you can see just some of the different things they would do. There's lots of writing and dictation and more reading and um, different things they're doing. They are working on lots and lots of worksheets that they would do to kind of practice what they're learning, their review. Um, there's another worksheet that they're gonna be doing some editing and then going back and finishing the rest of their lesson. So all those boxes are words that you're gonna dictate to your child or sentences and they're gonna write on a whiteboard or in a notebook. So there's lots and lots and lots of dictation. So all of these words here in the box are dictation. Now language lessons for a living education at the end of the book. So this is lesson 35. You'll see those highlighted sections. Those are the ones the kids read. We have grown in that. They're reading quite a bit more. And remember, they're also gonna be reading in their assigned reader at their own level. So there's a lot less writing and intensity in language lessons, which works well for some kids. Um, so you'll see here, they're gonna be writing a letter. It gives them kind of a guide, things that they're gonna be looking for. They're writing a psalm. But this is at the end of the book. And compared to where we came from, it's a just much gentler approach. So again, spelling, and you can see there's much more writing included, observation skills, grammar practice. They're covering similar things. It's just in a, it's a very different approach. It's way more Charlotte Mason, less busy work, more focused, more intentional, and not trying to just cram their head with everything at the same time. So they, now when they're drawing a picture, they're doing three sentences as opposed to just one. At the back of the book, there's actually the same amount of pages in the course book and language lessons for living education. But the back of language lessons is all teacher resources. So there's additional spelling practice, there's games you can do, all your spelling and sight words are there, and then there's all these copy worksheets that you could use if your child was struggling with something. There's also kind of these cheat sheets and then an answer key. So the good and the beautiful also has additional required resources. Language Lessons for a Living Education really is just the one book. All right, so here are my unfiltered opinions about these two. Now that you've seen them up close, heard a little bit more about them, let's talk about them from my personal perspective. Again, you guys remember this is my opinion and you guys all have the ability, the privilege and the honor and responsibility of making your own decisions. So I leave it in your court after this, but I wanna share from my perspective of using both these curriculums, where I stand and what I think of them and how they work for me. When I look at these two curriculums side by side, I, although Jenny Phillips, and when you look on the website, it will say that they are not really a style, but they definitely have pulled a lot of their stuff from Charlotte Mason. Other than certain things like the picture study, a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing, I would say is more classical or traditional as far as homeschool approach. So because I'm more Charlotte Mason, anything traditional, generally I run very far away from. I just do not like a lot of book work. I do not like a lot of heavy drill-based teaching. It's not my style, it doesn't work for my kids, and it doesn't work for me. Because of that, when I look at these side by side, I am way more drawn to language lessons for living education. Now, I do understand that for people, it was the draw for myself so I completely understand for the moms out there that are like but I feel like it's so rich it has so much and I love how much it includes I did too the thing that I found was that when I used it first of all it was it was fulfilling something within myself I felt confident that my child was getting this like really rich comparable to what I believe more classical education would look like I know that they're getting a good foundation it includes everything there's no fear of them being behind 
The problem is, is that each one of my children is unique and has developed at their own rate. Some are ahead, some are behind, some greatly struggle. And especially for those children that were really struggling, even going back, the drill-based spelling, spelling, spelling rules and approach of it was really detrimental to my children. even going back a level, I found that this was not bringing the life-giving experience that I wanted learning to be for my kids. It also was not really a life-giving experience for me. Although I felt good about what we were doing and the results that I was seeing in my kids, I could not sustain it. When we're talking about 70 to 80 minutes for my language arts, I mean, granted, it's, it's including my handwriting, it's including geography, Quite frankly, subjects that I don't actually go and do on my side anyways. I do social studies, I do science, and I do my language arts and math. I mean, those are our core subjects. So all of these things that it includes and incorporates as this huge draw, to me it's like, okay, but it's, it's 80 minutes, 80 to 90 minutes of my time per child. Now I have five children, five children. And all of these need me to sit down beside them and work with their flashcards and, and, and get them to read to me and do this. And, and I do believe that, especially for the younger grades, you're gonna have to work with your kids. There's no question. But Language Lessons for a Living Education, it says 20 to 30 minutes. The younger grades take us 10. 10 minutes. I absolutely believe strongly that it is more than enough. I've seen what kids at school are doing. Now kids at school are doing 20 sheets as opposed to the one but they're learning the same things. So if my child can learn the same thing with one sheet of paper without crying and it takes us 10 minutes and we can move on and do the fun stuff, why would I do the 20 sheets of paper? Why would I do the 90 minutes of work? So from a perspective, taking everything else out of it and even just the time, it to me is, is a no brainer. While I appreciate the fact that this has a reader for me and the good and the beautiful, I find that I actually prefer the ability to choose based on my child. Because my child may be working on a grade two kind of level over here, but then maybe in reading they're working at a kindergarten level or they're way ahead and they're in a grade four level. So I like the flexibility of it just saying read. Assign your child a book to read every single day. And you can do that at your child's own level, wherever they may be at. So we're talking less busy work and we're talking the flexibility for me to even use resources I have around my house or go to the library. I do not have to have specifically the books that are laid out for me. I don't have to study those books. Language Lessons for a Living Education is way more focused on the Bible. And whereas The Good and the Beautiful brings lots of biblical values and morals in, those are again taught from this perspective. Whereas Language Lessons for a Living Education, it is just let's read the Bible and we're gonna teach based off of that. So it's very, very different in the approach. Both say they are Christian resources. Both say that they can be used by Christian homeschoolers, doesn't matter what denomination you are. They, she does try to keep it neutral, if that makes sense. She tries to keep it just Christian values and morals and not necessarily get into, she's not teaching about the differences. There are vast differences. And anybody that's telling me that Mormons or Christians is just a denomination, it's, it's not just a denomination. And I feel like I need to say that right here. Strongly, 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 if you go do your research right on their website, it is not just a denomination of Christianity. It is very different. There's just, there's a lot of stuff that I believe very strongly is, is not, um, not biblical and not based on my Bible. So anyways. That being said, when I sat down and realized and started to do more of this research and understand some of those core differences, there are quite a bit of quotes and from, you know, people who are Mormon. Um, and so that comes in, especially in a lot of the history and stuff like that. And there are extra resources that are available. And I felt like something that is written from this, I don't know. I don't know what little things like a quote might come in there that would have some sort of spiritual influence over my child. I want to be the spiritual influence over my children, or I want it to be people that believe similarly to me. So that is why from a faith perspective, we decided to make the switch. I did see little things. The more research I've done, the more I've seen even on the site with the additional resources, I wasn't comfortable. And again, you're gonna have to make your own decision. But aside from the faith-based reasons, you hopefully have gotten to see a good idea of what are the differences. I understand there's gonna be parents out there. Not everybody is Charlotte Mason homeschoolers. Not everybody is 
comfortable with less. A lot of people feel very stressed about the idea of doing that and they can't, they can't handle it. They need to have something that is more traditional, that is very, very strong, that they can work with their kids. All I'm going to say about that is this, just don't forget your kids along that line. I understand we as parents sometimes want that, but are your kids enjoying it? Are your kids getting something out of it? Or are you losing them somewhere along the way? So do your own research, base it off of your child, base it off of what's going to work for your family, but hopefully this helped give you an inside look into what they look like and how it has worked for me as a homeschool mom. And if you have any other questions, please join the conversation and post the comments below and we'll talk to you guys again next week. See ya.